Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Tiffany Benson, one part of Team Benson. And today my garden is having a lot of changes because now it's time already, even though I know some of you guys are still waiting on your spring, it's time for us to start looking at summer. So this little warm spurt has brought forth a lot of things in my garden, <laughs> a lot of changes. One, I need to make sure I'm starting to collect seeds from the things that I did let go to fruition. And the other thing is that I need to kind of decide what I really want in my garden right now and what I plan on keeping and what I have to take out because I don't want to have a huge pest pressure in my garden right now. So. First, I wanna take you guys inside and just show you a little something something that I got going on. All right guys, so I start my summer garden just like I start my winter garden and fall garden in the peat pots. But one thing that I make sure that I focus on is that I don't like for it to be too humid inside here. You can see that there are a little bit of water droplets on my leaves, but I want my leaves to stay wet. So. What I do is I just take it off a little bit so that then it's not too, too humid and I leave this on at night so that then it waters the plants that are inside here. So I'm not gonna let them get too huge. I'm gonna check on the roots, see how the roots are starting to pop out. So that means that before they get too big, I'm gonna need to up pot these. So with those new starts, I'm going to be putting out those starts a lot earlier than I would my winter garden just because a lot of the things like cucumbers and squash and different things like that for our summer vegetables don't really like their roots disturbed. So I don't like for them to be in a place to where the roots are going to get disturbed for a long period of time. The earlier you get them out, the better. If you can start them directly in your garden, that's even better but I've had a full garden and the weather's been a little wonky, so I've been letting them grow in there. Well, with that said, I need to try to decide, okay, well, what do I really need to take out because of the, the pest? So first, I'm gonna go collect seeds. So now it's gonna be at time to get these berries. Now the cool part is, is that I was going to replant all of my Malabar spinach because of the hell damage that it had, but I pulled all these berries off and then just ran out of time to pull it up and didn't start seeds and something magical happened. It grew back and it grew back more leaves. So that I'm pretty excited about guys. So I think that this plant will just be fine. I'm going to harvest all the berries off of this one and then this one is already starting to grow back too as well so we're just gonna let it do its business now the second one that I'm gonna come in here and get is going to be um, all of the rat tail radishes now these ones I have been trying to save seeds for so I let them kind of dry out as that one falls and then the other ones I'm gonna let dry out inside because I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to uh, redo this this little pot and put some more um, soil into it and then I'm going to plant some cow peas in here because cow peas do good in the Arizona summer. Alright guys so we got all the berries off of this one and just look at all of these new leaves coming in and new little leads so I'm excited for this to really bush out this summer and cover this entire pole. Guess who's gonna have red fingers getting all these berries off? Me. All right guys, and this is all the rat tail radishes. So I'm gonna bring this one and that one in the house and we are going to talk about how I'm gonna go about saving them. So now I have weighed in on it and weighed in on it and there are two things in my garden that I let left for the bees and one I was trying to bring in some caterpillars for the other thing but the butterflies aren't coming <laughs> and I'm getting a lot of aphids on these two plants because it's at the end of their life. So I'm going to show you guys what they are. So you guys probably guessed it, the dill is covered in aphids. They're all over the place. Also, the lovely little bok choy that I was waiting for seeds is also covered in aphids. 
So the one thing I can't have in my garden is a lot of pests because I grow really, really tightly and I want to make sure that when something's at the end of its life, it's at the end of its life. I'm not going to eat the bok choy, I'm not going to eat any more of the dill, so it's time for it to go. But with every plant death comes new little plant life. Look at the green beans, guys. They are coming in. These are all my bush beans. I got another tray coming in too as well. So that's all I got, guys. It's time for me to uh, sign off. I'm going to go in and start the laborious task of taking all these little berries off of the stems so that they can dry so that I can have more Malabar spinach seeds. I already have a little collection going from that little guy. But I want to just remind you guys that sometimes you have to make those tough decisions in your garden of what's going to give you the largest yield. And sometimes, yes, you do want to keep things. You want to save seeds. You want to do this. You want to do that. But you have to realize that, you know, you don't have a big giant farm. Most of you don't. <laughs> if you're like me, I don't have a big giant farm. And I want to be able to produce a lot of, a lot of food for my family. So if that means that I have to support local seed companies and buy seeds every year because I don't have the space to save my own for different things, then that's what I have to do. I do get a chance to save seeds for all different types of things. Some things I just can't. So we all have to know what our garden can do and what it can't do. But until next time, make sure you guys grow yourselves a garden because even a small space can provide you with tons of food. Bye guys.